Everybody have this meeting then? Oh, actually, no, I don't have actually, too, um, usually before the meeting, we start with a, uh, if any public speakers want to say something, then it's two minutes. So if anyone has anything they want to say before we get started, just give them that opportunity. We usually go before. I'll tell you to go before. And, but afterwards, if there's something you want to say, after we adjourn, some, I'm sure some of the commissioners may stick around or far south, and you may be present at the next meeting as well. But for every meeting, we try to live two minutes, but we want to give anyone an opportunity to speak that would like to do so. Thank you for introduce yourself. I'm Yvette Moyal. I'm the publisher of the South Shore Current. Okay. And I'm also the leadership team of the Planning Coalition and have been a volunteer for the Planning Coalition for the last two years. Okay. As well as volunteering and on staff at Black and Young Crime. And I just want to say that this area has been um, rebranding South Shore, not board specific, but um, basically dealing with the three boards uh, to uh, be called the Cultural Soul Coast of Chicago. There's a lot of culture, culture history, and life here in this area that has not, the current residents or new residents are not aware of the rich history, uh, the vibrant culture, the artists, community, the writers, and other things that we have living in this community. So we've been working for the last two years with the Planning Commission, mostly in this SSA, to, um, to make that, you know, that statement, that uh, brand name cultural soul coast coming on. If you haven't been here uh, Friday night, as Val said, we have the Mo Better Jazz event every Friday night, uh, just a block away at a place called the Quarry. Before the Quarry opened up, which is a black-owned entertainment establishment, uh, the Planning Coalition was doing tours that um, sampled uh, to the community what the potential of uh, an entertainment venue right here. We could have wedding receptions and and children's events and church events in a very fine venue. Um, we also have the farmer's market there when Dominic's left on 71st and Jeffrey. Our solution, we had a lot of meetings with the Planning Coalition, but it was a, a solution-based meetings, not, you know, not three sessions or beef sessions. It was really about solutions, and one of the solutions was that what was missing was fresh produce, and we started the farmer's market, which is a vibrant, big farmer's market with about 200 members from the community who are members, and the membership is $25 per person. So I just wanted to sort of say those things. That's the beginning of the iceberg. The pop-up that was mentioned, uh, Sharon Harris was one of the leaders on the pop-up, and Sharon Lewis and, uh, and Lewis Harris. Yes, Lewis Harris. <laughs> and uh, the Planning Coalition was the main community organization that helped uh, develop that market that, which meant that 12 to 15 businesses uh, through a five-week period every uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday were able to uh, generate business from the community. And these are businesses that perhaps no one would have known that they operated because they were mostly um, home-based businesses. So we make those businesses come alive and be in a storefront uh, situation where money was generated. And it was a low, uh, a low um, entry level for those businesses, like $100 for the whole five weeks, which was really 15 days. So, you know, just to give you an idea that this is not a community that is sleeping, um, and that a lot of hard work, like a lot of volunteers have been going on. Every uh, time we come in, all in homes, we're always being, always being there, always been supportive of everything that we've done and really also having ideas that she's thrown out there so that we can take to the next level as people that work in the community. Anyone else? And so just for the flow of the meeting, um, 8.30 to 10, we have a hard stop at 10 um, because we have commitments. And so um, this which is why we have public comments on the front end. It is, we do want people to engage, but during the meeting, we just limit it to commissioners and voting and then we save comments for after the, afterwards. And maybe there needs to be some separate meeting. We can have an outgoing meeting with current alderman and then alderman left and plan on maybe having a meeting. Not so much of the open forum to just get ideas, but from the today, it's just, we don't want it to be, we, it, we want everyone to comment, but it's not a interactive meeting so per, per se. So just want to, not, not as a disrespect, but this is how we run all of our meetings, but we want to make sure that everyone is engaged. If there's questions, far south, I'm sure if you have business cards for the community, talk to them. That would be more, you know, more than happy. And if there's any information that you would like to see, bylaws or anything, you can reach out to Allison, Abraham directly. So that I just want to make sure everyone has a 
voice, but I just want to show it as a, if we want to have something to say, we're not ignoring it. We are we're not ignoring it. We just want to make sure that we are all heard. And next month, next time we'll have a larger space because we never have anyone coming. So usually that's not why we have it. We usually don't have it here, but we just haven't had it such a large turnout, which we appreciate. So that will just take the project to next one. Also, uh, all new homes will have to say something. And all new homes will have to say something? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, so Sarah kind of just mentioned what I was going to say, which first of all, let me thank all the commissioners here. Welcome. Now, finally. Uh, um, uh, thank you for your service over the past two years. Um, it's been... It's been a long road and a long journey, but I feel very comfortable um, in leaving you guys in the hands of Far South. Um, and with Allison back on board, I know that we are really going to start to be able to actually get some things done um, in the footprint and um, working with other organizations that want to come to the table. So I'm just, just thank you for your service. I mean, we've been through a lot. Um, and, uh, you know, I feel, I feel good at the point we are now, and I know that we're going to continue to move forward. I am going to just tag on to what Sarah said and just say that I think that a separate meeting needs to be had with the Alderman-elect, um, with the commissioners, DPD, um, because I don't know if everyone here, I haven't seen most of you at SSA meetings before, so I don't even know if everyone really knows what the SSA is, what the function is, um, and, you know, how it operates, and so maybe kind of a mini tutorial of, of what the purpose is, um, how the commissioners are appointed, their terms, um, what the real work of an SSA does. Um, I know that DPD does the annual plan, uh, annual kind of forum, um, but I think a separate meeting outside of a commissioner meeting, which this is a meeting that is open uh, to the public, but a separate informational meeting um, should be had so that there's good understanding um, and explanation of kind of what the function of this body is um, and, and kind of the roles and responsibilities of, of the commissioners, the service provider, the program manager, um, and DPD's role as well. Um, so I would just, just want to make sure that's out there um, and suggest that happen, you know, sooner rather than later and whatever that is, sooner whatever. Um, the other thing is, is one of the things that um, you know, we did start, and I'll just pass these around. I don't know if I have enough for everybody, but at least make sure the commissioners and DPD get it. Um, as you know, we did start a 79 straight corridor planning process. And, um, and, these are, let's start this too. and um, really great thing about Far South coming on is, I mean, so folks who don't know, Far South is the new service provider. They've just taken over from a previous service provider that um, the SSA had, but the commissioners took the time to interview several different service providers um, before concluding that um, the Far South would um, be a uh, would be the best one to help move the SSA forward. Um, and in meeting with the Far South after after they were selected, I was glad to know that Abraham has a really good background in planning and talked to him about some of the things that we'd already started in December with the Developers Roundtable. Um, and so the next phase of this was the meeting we had in March, which was the community meeting, which talked about the 79th Street Corridor. And really it's a joint venture with um, the 8th Ward. There's also SSA 50 is, is, is abuts us in that corridor. Um, so there's great opportunity to continue to move that initiative forward. And I, you know, that's something I did out of the alderman's office. That's not a typical thing that an alderman would do. But I definitely feel that's something that um, the SSA, in working with collaboratively with 50, um, and I know Far South has worked with Tesca and Associates, who was a part of kind of helping us put this corridor initiative um, together and the steps um, that we took to get it to the place where it is now, which is now analyzing the surveys. So we're going to turn over all of that information to Allison. Oh, here was the stuff. I'm sorry. Sorry. Um, we're going to turn over all the boards and stuff, DPD prepare for us. We're going to give that to Allison. Um, hopefully the next phases of this could be some sort of visioning, but I know, again, I know they're familiar. When I sat down with Abraham, he's like, oh, look what we have. So they've already done this um, over in, uh, what do you got, 34? 34. They've already done it in 34. That's the ward, but not the SSA. 45. 35. 45. 45. So they've already done it in 45, um, kind of a planning initiative. I know that also Abraham has relationships with 
um, Southeast Chamber, who is the service provider for SSA 50. So we really just want to, you know, I wanted to make sure you guys got a copy of this um, right now so you see where the stages are. We have the other surveys that we took at the meeting that we're still compiling, so we'll get that to you as well. But that's definitely an initiative, I think, um, the SSA can continue to move forward, especially with some of the things that you guys as commissioners have been talking about with, you know, the window wraps and, um, you know, along the vacant storefronts and things of that nature. So I just wanted to make sure I passed that along because, again, that's not something, that was something that came out of the Alderman's office, but not something typically the Alderman would do. So this is a, the right group to pass it on to. Um, and, of course, you have a great person in Abraham here who, who understood this process while it was happening. Um, so he'd be a great person to help continue leading the charge. So I just wanted to make sure we did that to you guys. So, And thank you for your service. Thank you for, you know, uh, working through the rocky road so that we could get to this even kill now. Um, and, you know, I just wish you great success as you continue to move forward. And I know you at least have one other commissioner that will be coming on uh, soon. Um, so good luck. And like I just said, I want to, I want to thank uh, our current all of them for our passion and the championship of this SSA 49. As we, you know, we, uh, we thought we were being limbo, but she jumped right on in and she helped us even make this transition to our new service provider. Uh, and so, kudos to you. Um, one of the things before we get into the government, I want to also acknowledge the city of Chicago because uh, we, you know, from the start of the get go, we want to understand kind of briefly, we're not going to go too detailed, but kind of briefly about the SSA, the commissioners, and the service provider, just to kind of give an overview a little bit, if that's okay. Um, and I'll turn that over to, to Mark. It's 10 o'clock, the car stop. Right, right, we'll be at there. So, uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, so, one of the important functions that this board of commissioners has, has is to um, be the oversight to the SSA. But in order they, to do that, they need a provider to do the day-to-day -day work, uh, you know, make sure that the streets are swept and that uh, things are purchased, that there's security, the snow plumbing, et cetera. Um, and so, uh, one of the important duties of the commission is to every year, besides selecting the determining the budget for the upcoming year, the levy rate, and so on, they also select who their service provider is. And so, uh, going into last fall, they knew that they wanted to select a new service provider. Um, so that's totally within their right to do that, to, to in the interest of the SSA. So um, they did do an RFP process, as was mentioned. Um, and Far South was selected. Um, ideally, Far South would have been selected um, to be ready to go January 1st. That, that didn't happen quite that way. Um, there was a delay um, in that there was no city council meeting in February. So uh, the first available uh, meeting that, that uh, they could be approved was March 18th. So in fact, of March 18th, Far South became the new service provider. In the interim, between uh, January 1st and March 18th, the, the city of Chicago actually, as, as default, uh, was the service provider for the SSA during that transition period. Uh, so, so there's always um, uh, that function, but ultimately it's this commission that, that oversees the, the board. We, we do trainings from the city when we uh, we do annual trainings for commissioners. We have annual forums for the service provider staff um, so that they are kept abreast of, of the latest policies that DPD has uh, governing the special service area program. Um, it's